do I have chocolate on my face? Well, you caught me in the act of dipping my beautiful Florentine cookies in chocolate, and it is a messy job. Hey guys, happy holidays. I'm here now making one of my favorite all-time cookies, the Florentine cookie. It's not just my favorite cookie. My daughters absolutely love it too. All my friends, my family. It's one of my signature cookies and it's so easy to make. And you can make it gluten-free. It doesn't make any difference because there's only a quarter cup of flour in it. So whether it's all-purpose flour or gluten-free flour, it makes absolutely no difference. So I'm going to wipe the chocolate off my face and get right to showing you how to make these delicious, elegant, delicate cookies. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can make these either with regular all-purpose flour or with gluten-free flour and make them gluten-free as well. So I've got two cups of sliced almonds here in the bowl and I'm gonna sprinkle in a quarter cup of gluten-free flour. You can use uh, all-purpose, no problem at all. And we're gonna give it a slight flavor of orange by grating some, well, this is a uh, mandarin oranges. I forgot to buy an orange. We want a little bit of that orange zest going in here, which combined with the almonds and the chocolate that we're gonna dip this into, just puts it over the top. I remember when I was in Venice a number of years ago, oh gosh, a couple of decades ago, I remember seeing Florentine cookies everywhere. It seemed like every pastry shop had it. And of course, you know, I couldn't have them because I figured they wouldn't have been vegan. Um, but they are a cookie that I grew up with in some way. Um, many, many years ago before I became vegan, um, I discovered them somewhere. I can't remember. Was it Japan? I don't remember. And I absolutely love them. So now that we have vegan butter and other things it's so easy to recreate so many of these classic desserts and this one is absolutely wonderful now definitely get an orange you want the zest of one orange and i like to pull it across my fruit so i'm not just going like this indiscriminately and not knowing whether or not i'm getting down to the pith so i think i'm going to be a little light on the orange flavor with this batch because um these soft mandarins just aren't cooperating. Whew, I just got a little juice in my eye. But it'll have a hint of orange. So we mix this up. Now what we need to do, it's a very different technique, is to simmer some other ingredients that we're going to pour over here before we bake them. So let's get over to the stove. I'm going to combine three ounces of any vegan butter you like, uh, including uh, the one that you can make at home. Watch my butter video and learn how to make delicious spreadable vegan butter so easily. I'm going to add a half a cup of organic sugar. I'm going to add a half a cup of maple syrup, which not only helps it to caramelize and harden, but just adds some wonderful flavor. And finally, about three, three and a half tablespoons of vegan creamer. So any vegan creamer, or you can make your own cashew cream that you put in there as well. That works equally as well. So we're gonna melt the butter and we're gonna bring this to a simmer and we're gonna cook it for about two to three minutes uh, so that it starts to caramelize. And that is gonna be what allows the cookies to form. The sugars are crystallizing, combined with the flour, it will create this amazingly thin wafer-like texture. We have to just let that cook for about three minutes. It's been a little over two minutes between two and three, and I'm going to pour this over the mixture. All right, I'm going to pour it over the almond flour mixture. And we'll give this a stir. And now we are ready to drop and bake. You want to keep these relatively small because they are going to spread out. Now, if you allow this mixture to cool for a very, very long time, uh, the, the sugars in here are going to crystallize and the whole mixture will be much firmer. At that point, you're gonna to wanna to make little balls and slightly flatten them so they spread out better. Mm -hmm. 
Well, guys, you know me. I always forget something, so I forgot to add the vanilla. Uh, this is why you have to do your mise en place, which means you get all your ingredients out ahead of time. Uh, and when we're filming these shows, I'm just kind of winking it, pulling things out of here and there, because I, you know, I shoot these shows sort of in between everything else. So, uh, pardon me. These won't have vanilla flavor, but they'll have that lovely caramelized flavor, the caramel flavor from the uh, the maple syrup and everything else. So they'll still be absolutely delicious, but. These do have vanilla now. The next batch will have vanilla. Okay, in they go, 350, 350 degree oven for eight to 10 minutes. And at the very end when they've cooled off, we're gonna drizzle some melted chocolate on top. Oh, they all kind of ran together. These are a little better. This is the second pan. It helps to let the mixture sit for a minute, not get too thick so that they can keep their form just like these rather than running in together. Now we're gonna be able to break these in half so it'll be perfectly fine anyway. But now that this mixture has been sitting for about, oh, eight to 10 minutes, as you can see, it's a little bit thicker and uh, these will hold their form much better because of that. So it's better to let the mixture sit for about five minutes before you drop them on your cookie sheet. These will be the family ones, the ones the family can enjoy, and then you can package up the perfect ones to give to your friends. All right, I'm gonna melt some chocolate. I have a bain marie going, which means I've got a pot here with some water in there, and I have a clean, dry bowl. Whenever you're melting chocolate, make sure that you don't even get a drop of water in there because that is what could turn the chocolate from glossy and creamy to grainy. All right, so I looked around the house. I always have chocolate for cooking, dark chocolate, but today I couldn't find anything except for these uh, Dr. Bronner's Magic All-in-One Chocolate Bars with hazelnut. So we're going with that because we don't like to waste. We do what we can. That's called aran arrangiarsi in Italian where you're the art of uh, adaptation, making do. Uh, and, and that's what, you know, if you've known me long enough, you know that's what I do. Uh, I make things happen with whatever it is I have lying around the house. So these are dark chocolate bars with hazelnuts. And we're not gonna use the hazelnuts, but I can still remove the chocolate part to drizzle on top of the cookie. Another part to melting chocolate, making sure that uh, it doesn't get this white bloom, as you can see, is to make sure that it never gets really, really hot, okay? And don't get any water in there. So we're just gonna let this sit for a few minutes and give it a stir. If, if you really wanna take more time, get it done faster, you can break all of these up. You can chop them up. I know a lot of chefs that do that. They will chop their chocolate before melting and it makes it go faster. And then you have people like me, the, the the make-do lazy chefs that somehow still get the job done. Pretty well, too, I might add. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna let this sit for a minute. Um, and we'll turn the heat off at some point, too, because we don't want it to get over hot. So uh, I'm melting the chocolate here. I just wanna show and tell, it's not quite ready, but as you can see, a little bit of white mold beginning to grow on this new cheese. This is not cashews. Um, I've been playing around with some new substrates. So um, I have found, I think, the perfect base for a bloomy rind. That is like a, a brie or a camembert. Um, it is so full of flavor once the, the mold starts to eat it. Um, so when they're perfect, I will take a picture uh, after the mold has covered the entire cheese and post it. But anyway, I'm really happy that this is working so well. I'm going to be sharing the recipe in my new book that'll be coming out, The Vegan Creamery. Um, you know, let me know what the title of that book should be. So it's not just about cheese. It's about everything that would come out of a creamery, out of a dairy. So everything from milk to ice cream, to sour cream, to butter, to cheese. And of course, it won't just be your typical almond milk. We're almost done with these cookies. Oh yes, okay. So I definitely need to use larger sheet pans, which I actually have because they're all sort of running into each other. I probably 
should have spaced them out more. Maybe, I think I can only get six of these on a tray, on this particular tray, mm -hmm. to get them to be absolutely perfect. Yeah. So the color is great, but as you can see, they're all kind of running into each other. I'm gonna just try one. Mmm. So, so good. There are several ways to drizzle. The art of drizzling chocolate. The way I like to do it, I think it's the simplest. You can put it in a pastry bag. Obviously, this you cannot because there are chunks of hazelnuts in it. So, a um, couple things you could do. You could dip like this. And then you get what Annie said is uneven. You don't get a bite of chocolate with every single bite. So, another thing you can do is just take some chocolate and you have to work fast and you just drizzle like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect. But you just go back and forth as fast as you can. And I have to avoid the hazel nuts. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So if I make a large batch of this, I will actually go get some real chocolate. Cho is a brand I really like. Uh, they're completely vegan and uh, fair trade and all that, I believe. Excellent quality too. And then of course you want to let the chocolate dry before you stack them. But once it's completely dry and hard, you can stack these cookies. My daughters absolutely love Florentine cookies. They're elegant, they're crisp, they're light, they're delicious. A little bit of that old world flavor without being overly sweet and sugary. I, you know, I just am not one of those people that wants to eat a bunch of sugar cookies with royal icing on for the holidays, but give me a Florentine and a cup of tea in the afternoon, and that is a treat. Well, now that I've got all these cookies made and no chocolate left on my face, it's time to fix that issue. Hey, I didn't say eating Florentine cookies was neat. Mmm. Yum. Happy holidays, everybody.